Hello everyone. Welcome again to the lecture part 2 on networks and the internet. So in this part we are going to talk about more details on how networks actually work behind the scene that we cannot see normally outside from a device. So let's talk about the basic data communication. Data communication are the exchange of data between devices via some form of transmission medium such as a wire cable. So you have two devices you can imagine we can transmit data. How we can transmit data? We can use some cable. We can transmit data without the cable. Both are possible, right? This is the interpretation as a normal user who see the network from the outside. But what happened to the inside? For data communication to occur, the com communication, communicating devices must be part of the communication system made of a combination of hardware and software. You can see from this simple diagram, there is a sender devices and there is one receiver device. When you want to send some data, for example, from a smartphone through your router that, I have, that we have seen from the last um, presentation, you send your data to your home router maybe, and this router will pass it through the transmission channel to the receiver, right? To your destination. So what will happen when the sender wants to send some data? It must follow some rules, which is known as protocol in terms of networking. Network language, we use the protocols more often, which is nothing but the rules. So protocol is a set of rules. So the certain instruction that the data will follow so that the whole network system could understand what they're supposed to do with that particular data. So the, the message of the data will then transmit to the receiver. At the receiver end, it should have same protocol suit. That means it must need to know how this message should read. Otherwise, it is not going to work. So the both sides should agree on a on a method so that they can both can understand how to read and write the information. Okay, so in the next part, we're going to discuss a little bit about the components. So as we have seen in the last photo that we have um, one component called the message. This is the information that a user wants to send through the network. It could be a text, it could be a number, it could be a picture, it could be audio or video files, right? And then the other component is called the sender itself. Sender is the device that sends this data message. It can be a computer, your workstation, telephone handset, video camera, and so on. What about the receiver? Receiver is sent as same as the sender. It could be a computer, workstation, handset, television, and so on. So this is sender receiver is nothing but um, a communication device, right? Who can generate data and receive data. The another component is called the transmission medium. Transmission medium is a physical path that which the mass is actually um, passes through from sender to receiver. Some example of transmission media include a twisted pair cable. Maybe in the, uh, at your home you often see many cables we are really twisted together. Um, the coaxial kind of cables, fiber optic cables nowadays very common, or the radio waves like the Wi-Fi. These are all called the transmission media. And the other component we need to keep in our mind is called the protocols. As I have already mentioned, protocol is a set of rules. So now when you want to send some data, the device need to follow some rules so that it can send data correctly into the system. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about the protocol layers. Let us use a scenario in communication in which the role of the protocol layering may be better understood. Um, we use two examples. In the first example, communication is so simple that can be occurred in one layer. The layer is, you can 
imagine a piece of cake it has for example it has multiple layers four layers however we could also have one single layer right um, so as I have mentioned at the first beginning with an example which has a single layer what does it mean let's assume that two friends Maria and Anne a neighbor with a lot of common ideas however Maria speak only Spanish and Anne speak only English since both have learned the sign languages in their childhood they enjoy meeting in a cafe a couple of days per week and exchange the idea using the signs which is nice occasionally they use a bilingual dictionaries um, communication is face to face happen and and face to face and happen in one layer we can say because two person they can interact each other directly by using those sign languages so there is no other intermediate things in between them this is an example of a simple single layer communication now think about another more complicated one however the scenario is now uh, that Anne has to move another town because of a new job before she moved the two met for the last time in some cafe right and then what will happen although both are sad Maria surprises Anne when she opened a packet that contains two small machine the first machine can scan and transform a letter in English to a secret code or vice versa. The another machine can scan and translate a letter in Spanish to the other to, to, to the some secret code or vice versa. So by using this machine, Anna takes the first machine and Maria takes the second one, the two friends can still now communicate using the secret code as shown in this figure. In the figure you can see, although they cannot talk to each other with the same languages, however, they took some help. For example, in this case, took help as a translator. And they used some code, maybe this code will be sent some post office, which the postman will carry it to the destination site. When it, when it received that this translator could decode the secret code and transfer it into English so the Anne could understand what Maria was saying. This is an example. In this case, we have seen it's not being done by one single layer. However, it is done by three different layers. This is called the layer task. When we divided one complicated task into multiple layers is called a layer task it makes a complicated task into a simplified form and also it makes easy to get communicated even though the two devices or the two person are not in the same state so in um, computer network and native uh, internet system they must need to agree that whole world we have many devices they must need to agree in some form of model that they all follow otherwise it's not going to work anyway so one of the model is called OSI model so OSI model is full form is open system interconnection model described seven layer that computer system used to communicate over a network it was first standard model for network communication adopted by all major computers and telecommunication companies in early 1980s. So it's many years back when the communication system was evolving and people feel that it is really needed to have some common stand, common platform that means standardize some model so that other each and every devices, each and every devices uh, manufactured by different companies must agree a some sort of model they need to follow when they try to connect to each other for example Motorola for example Nokia um, the other devices telecommunication, 
telecommunication devices, they want to communicate with each other, right? It's not even possible that on the whole world, only the people will using some Nokia. And this Nokia user cannot get connected with the Huawei or the other manufacturer company or the Apple one, right? So they must need to agree to follow a system, a model, in such a way that both can understand and exchange their information. This is the OSM model. This is the standard model that all communication devices actually follow. So now see what are these models says. We have seen the layer task. In this model, we have seven layers. So OSM model consists of seven different layers. The top layer, which is number seven, is called the application layer. So this is the first layer when human computer interaction occurs, like you and me when we open our mailbox and start writing something and click on send button. So this is everything is controlled in that layer. So this is the first layer or the top layer in the OSM model. Next, when we click on the send button, this information will pass through all these layers up to in the physical layer. When it reaches to the presentation layer, what will happen? They will change the format of the layer, of the letter, because when you type, maybe in English, but computer don't know English, we have already learned it. They only know the binary form. So we need to change it in some format, which the other layers, bottom to that presentation layer could understand and process those data, right? In the second layer, and, and the next layer is the session layer. This layer is mainly responsible for controlling the session. You know, sometimes in the um, in a email of the UVIC or you get access to your my UVIC account and you keep it uh, idle for a few minutes, maybe you can see uh, it is locked out automatically. So this is the session. When you logged in, your session start. When you log out or your timer goes up, the system automatically kick you out or close the session. This all are controlled at that particular layer is known as the session layer. And the next, the data will pass this to the another layer is called the transport layer, as the name mentioned. This is one of the important layer that uh, the data will be transmitted is a control. It will create some mechanism so that the data can be transmitted to the sender in such a way that the receiver could get some acknowledgement. Just imagine when you send an email to someone and you get a notification, right? So this is something like that. So you get the confirmation the data is transmitted. Um, and the next layer is called network layer. So this is the layer where the computer will decide, okay, the sender sent me some data to transmit to a destination. I need to find a path, which path I need to go so that I can reach to a particular destination that the sender asked me to go, right? And then it poses something and passes the packet of the message to the next layer, which is called the data link layer. This data link layer will do some more work, for example, error correction and detection. Because when you transmit some data, it could be happen that the data could lost, some of the bit get lost. So it should run some mechanism so that the data can be remain same when it reached to that destination. And the next layer is the physical layer. This is the last layer, the bottom layer of the OSM model. In that layer, the message will be transformed into a simple bit string, so like 0 and 1, and it will then transmit it to the channel. That means it will transmit it through your internet cable or Wi-Fi, and it transmit it to the internet towards its destination. So you can see, when you send your data from your computer, maybe here, and you type something, it will interact with the application layer. And this piece of data will pass through at each and every layer until its physical layer, where it will pass just simply a bit stream. 
And this OSI model is also same in the receiver end. When it reaches to receiver end, the whole process will be the reverse way. And when it reaches to the application layer, the receiver could get the original data back again. In the next slide, we talk about the data encapsulation decapsulation. In the previous one, we say the data will be transmitted each and every layer go through, they will do some work and it will reach to the destination, right? This whole process has a name, it's called data encapsulation and decapsulation. Data encapsulation decapsulation is you easily can imagine uh, something like tag. Whenever you want to travel, you want to carry some bag, often you have some sort of tagging like in these images, right? Why you put those tags? Can you can you relate those tags? Yeah, simply because so that you can identify your luggages, right? Same thing happen when you try to send your data through your channel. You need to put some mark and tag, and those mark and tag information carry some information. For example. In the travel luggages bag, in tag, tag in the tag, what what the information we could include? We could include the owner addresses. We could include the owner name, right? The phone numbers. That means if somehow if the packet get or the bag get or the luggage get lost, it can be retrieved back to the owners, right? These things is an example of data encapsulation. In the next slide, we're going to see in details. So let's assume we want to send some data from PC1 to PC2 uh, through the network. So data will be generated in the top layer, with this, which is application layer. This application layer data will be processing, passing through the presentation layer and session layer and reach to the transport layer. In transport layer, when it reaches, this data will be added some tag information. And this is called the segment. Segment means the total part is called segment. Remember, when we try to put some tag information, the whole data is never be changed. It will remain same. We are just adding some more additional information with the main data. This is called the overhead data. Again, we need to add those additional information so that the data could be reached to the destination correctly. Well, when it passes through the tra transport layer to the network layer, you can see there's another additional header added with that. And this additional header will going to include its IP address. Nowadays, you all know what is IP address, internet protocol. All we know how the IP can help us to find the destination. It's just simply like as a home address or how like when you want to send some letter to your friend you must need to include his or her home addresses so ip address is something like that when you want to send some data and ask okay send it to the destination the system don't know where i need to send the ip address is just like an address of the destination so you know the network could know that okay so particular ip i need to send this data to the particular destination and then this data will pass us to network layer to data link layer. When it reaches to data link layer, as I have already mentioned, it will going to include some mechanism to protect it from being corrupted. And that is why in that case, you can see this is not only single, but two more additional tag information will be added on top of it. And then at the last, it will be converted into the PT stream in the physical layer. And then it will pass us through your internet and receive in the destination site, right? So this is how basically how the network works behind the scene. When you write something in a in a in an email, you post it something, all this data actually passes through each and every steps until it is to the destination and whole whole process is going in this way. Now when hap what happened to the receiver? 
when the receiver, receiver receive this bit stream it will convert it to the frame again just like uh, the sender but the opposite way what will happen the data link layer will read this frame and read this header then it will remove this header if it is correct and passes it to the network layer in the network layer they will read its header like the ip address if it is fine the ip address is same as it mentioned in the data that means he is the owner of this data so it will check and it will pass this to the upper layer it goes to the again the transport layer the transport layer will check its header information it will check whether it is the, the data are segmented or not if it is segmented the data will be collected all together to retrieve the original data and then it will passes to the upper layer in the application layer for example the user could see in the monitor the whole information all together yeah so this is the it had a quick overview of whole network data system how the model works how the data will be encapsulated and decapsulated I hope by listening to today's lecture, you could have a little bit more, more knowledge on how we can send this data over the internet, who is maybe you are in some part of the world and your friend is from sitting in the another part of the world, but still get connected through this amazing internet connectivity. So this is the end of today's lecture, and I would like to thank all of you for listening to this lecture. Thank you.